Hi, this is Charmaine. And Kathy. From Charmaine and Kathy's Road. We're a happily married couple who love independent, budget-minded travel. We choose a pace that allows us to experience the people and culture of the places we visit, and not just check off boxes on a bucket list. We'll share with you our impressions and recommendations about what's popular, what's quirky, and what's off the touristy path. Hey everyone, this is Charmaine and Kathy from Charmaine, Charmaine and Kathy's, Kathy's Road. Road. This video is a breakdown of where we went and what we spent on a 36-day do-it-yourself European adventure. So to get more details and videos from us, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. So let's start by showing you where we went. We flew into Paris, rented an electric car, and took seven days to explore the Loire Valley. We saw the magnificent Notre Dame Cathedral in Rouen and wandered around the streets there. We loved the craggy beauty of Mont Saint-Michel where we took the long, steep walk up to the Abbey. In Amboise, we toured the amazing Chateau de Chenonceau with its massive furnishings, tapestries, and sculpted gardens. Also in Amboise, we saw Clos Luce, the last home of Leonardo da Vinci, and his studio with designs of his futuristic inventions. At Chartres, we walked through the stunning Gothic cathedral, which dates back to the 11th century. Then we went to Versailles and spent a day exploring the palace, home of the French kings from Louis XIV to Louis XVI. After driving to Paris, we flew to Portugal, landed in Lisbon and took a train to Sintra, the hilltop town which is home of the famous multicolor Penny Palace. The palace, now a national monument, was once a monastery and then the summer home of Portuguese royalty. The next day we took a bus to the upscale coastal town of Cascais. There we strolled leisurely along the water. <coughs> the following day we went back near Lisbon and stayed in the town of Balaam birthplace of the delicious Portuguese custard tart, the Pasta de Nada. There we saw the Explorer's Monument, Balaam's Castle, and the Geronimus Monastery. At the monastery, you can see the tomb of the famous Portuguese explorer, Vasta de Gama. After that, we took a Bolt ride, B-O-L-T, which is like an Uber, and we spent one day in downtown Lisbon checking out some of the sites and riding through the historic city center on the famous Tram 28. After our time near Lisbon, we headed by train to Lagos and spent the next four days exploring Portugal's beautiful Algarve region and southern beaches. We visited the town of Sagres and Cabo St. Vincent, the southernmost point in Europe. Then, the following day in Porto Mayo, we had an amazing boat ride to and through the Benajo Caves. The ride is a not to be missed experience. Moving inland, we stopped in Sovish, a town famous for its oranges. We found a gorgeous town square where we sipped cappuccinos near a blooming tree with purple flowers and later had the best fresh squeezed OJ of our lives. On another day, we visited beautiful Albufera with its miles of flat sandy beaches and an escalator that took us up and down to the beach. Lastly, in Faro, we saw the eerie chapel of bones adorned with skulls of the Carmelite monks who died in the 1800s. On day 24, we flew from Faro back to Paris. Back in Paris, we spent six days checking out all the attractions, going to the Louvre, 
the world's most visited museum with more than 35,000 works of art on display. We saw the iconic Eiffel Tower completed in 1889. And from there, we wandered through Paris streets and neighborhoods and gardens until we arrived at the Arc de Triomphe. The following day, we visited the outside of Notre Dame Cathedral, being rebuilt from the devastating fire of 2019. And then the inside of Saint-Chapelle, which has 15 huge stained glass panels depicting stories of the Bible. The next morning, we walked through the gorgeous Tuileries Gardens. One of our favorite Paris attractions was the Musée d'Orsay, with its vast collections of Impressionist and Post-Impressionist art. On another day, we took a funicular to the hilltop setting of the Basilica of Sacré-Cœur to admire the views. From there, we walked down to the infamous Moulin Rouge. That afternoon, we visited L'Orangerie Museum featuring three rotunda rooms with huge murals of Monet's water lilies. Our days in Paris ended with a lovely evening cruise on the Seine River time so that we saw the lights of the Eiffel Tower and Paris's stone bridges on our way back. On day 30, we left Paris on a high-speed train to Strasbourg, France, and spent four days there. We fell in love with the mix of French and German cultures, the historic neighborhoods of La Petite France, and the charming cafes and the people. We loved strolling along the canals, looking at beautiful half-timbered buildings and stunning plants, and watching street performers. Getting around was easy with the color-coded electric tram system. There's so much to see and enjoy in Strasbourg, it was hard to leave. But it was time to get back get to Charles de Gaulle Airport and fly home. So a bit of a disclaimer on costs. Our costs for this trip were based on the decisions that we made along the way. So our experience might not necessarily be yours. We first started by watching and monitoring flights. Our airline ticket to Paris became the best price at six months out. We bought it then early, and then we began looking for rooms and hotels or Airbnbs. And the best thing to do is even monitor those because later they could be not the cheapest or they could go down. So we would cancel and rebook if we had to. Mostly we say by booking early. And we didn't eat out at a restaurant three times a day. For example, if our hotel was serving breakfast, but breakfast cost 12 to 18 euros per person, We'd walk down to a cafe or boulangerie, get a cappuccino, get a croissant, and spend eight euros total instead. We also save tons of money by using public transportation. The buses and metro systems are great. We also felt that that made the trip more authentic for us. We felt like we actually lived in France and lived in Portugal. So the bottom line here is do your research. Plan early and really plan, and you'll save a lot of money. And that's the way to keep your costs for the trip manageable. We spent $1,925 on food. No three-star Michelin restaurants for us. We didn't even want to take the time to eat three meals a day at restaurants. In the mornings, we sometimes had breakfast at our hotel when it was included at no charge. Otherwise, we went to boulangeries and bought croissants, quiche, and etc. We embraced eating like locals. We saved money by sometimes sharing entrees, drinking water, shopping at a grocery store when we had a kitchen, or bringing takeout home to our room for a picnic. On hotels, we spent $4,425. You'll be surprised at some of the amazing places we stayed. In the countryside, by beaches and hilltops, even a renovated chateau. Some were small, but very clean and comfortable. Others were roomy and some had even had kitchens. 
Some were quaint D&Bs and some were grand, but all were special part of our European adventure. We saved lots of money by doing tons of research and looking early. We spent $2,700 on transportation. We've always loved the old John Candy, Steve Martin movie, Trains, Planes, and Automobiles. On this trip, we took planes, trains, automobiles, buses, trams, metro systems, Uber and Bolt rides, a funicular, and even a tuk-tuk. We only rented cars for two weeks. We spent $350 on admissions. This covered all the museums and attractions we visited in our two short boat trips. We spent $295 on extras. That's miscellaneous stuff. Some souvenirs, including Michelle, our pet lamb, from Mont Saint Michel, and tips for meals and tips for Bolt and Uber drivers. So our grand total for the entire 36 day trip was $9,695. Wow! So check out our upcoming details to see more about all those beautiful places we visited and learn more about how we saved money on this trip. So please subscribe to our YouTube channel and then you can go on our website and follow our blog and we're on Facebook and Instagram. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching. watching.